I love Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall. It's an open-world fantasy life simulator that has a background simulation of shifting faction relationships dancing all around the player. Kind of like how in Skyrim the game is built around the player. Well, in this, the game shifts around the player in a way that forces the player to navigate at the game's pace. What that means is they may be associated with a specific faction at the time, and that faction relationship clashes with another faction relationship and actually changes how the player is seen without the player doing anything. There is a political simulation running in the background, and the player is at its whim. While all this is going on, of course, the game has a core focus on dungeon crawling. That said, mods have expanded The Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall to the point in which we have roads, additional locations in the wilderness, and expanded encounters we face in real time traveling in the overworld. This is the advent of the Unity engine port for Daggerfall, known as Daggerfall Unity. Daggerfall Unity's GOG cut is often the first result that comes up when people Google search Daggerfall Unity. This is a bad thing. You see, I love GOG, or Good Old Games, the CD Projekt Red-owned games alternative to Steam. It specializes in DRM-free products. DRM, for those who don't know, stands for Digital Rights Management, is a form of tool that controls if and how users can interface with a product. Back in the day before DRM, we'd download a game and play it. In a post-DRM world, the lightest kind of DRM are CD keys that we'd have to put in to make the product work. The middle ground where we'd have to authenticate our CD keys on an online service after installation to make the game work. And finally, the most extreme type, where we don't even own a copy of our games at all, and they can be taken away. For those who don't know, Steam, Origin, and Uplay are all examples of the most extreme version of DRM. From a legal perspective, we've technically never owned our games to begin with. We've merely had an unlimited license to access and play them. The distinction of legal ownership versus practical ownership is the ability to create copies and distribute them legally. We don't have that, and we've never had that. But the problem is, with most games historically, before Steam, we had practical ownership. That is to say, no one could force our games to update without our permission, and games could not be taken away from us, say, as opposed to current gaming, where if our Steam Origin or Uplay account were taken away, we'd lose all our games. This is where GOG's DRM-free service comes into play. We can download the game, back it up on our external devices, and save it for the future. We are even free to re-download the game from GOG as long as it exists, similar to how Steam works. If GOG ever goes away, though, which is a distinct possibility considering how little money GOG reportedly makes, we would get to keep all the games we downloaded forever on our external devices and we wouldn't need to run GOG Galaxy to play them. So in short, DRM-free is good because nothing online is permanent. I had the initial impulse to start this sentence by saying a little while ago because I have no sense of time, but correcting myself, years ago, Bethesda released Daggerfall online for free. Websites like UESP, unofficial Elder Scrolls pages, ended up picking up the official installer and mirroring it for archival purposes. Eventually, Ancestor Ghost created an objectively best installer that had checkboxes allowing us to choose which versions of which patches or mods we wanted to install with it. Point is, Daggerfall has been free online for years. Having played Daggerfall off and on before, during, and after that time, all three time periods, I can tell you it has always been a buggy, broken, glitchy mess. And I loved the premise. But I can never quite recommend it to other people. Even with the fixes the Ancestor Ghost uh, Daggerfall setup program created. That's when another developer came along and tried to fix things up with Daggerfall foundationally by creating a new program to replace Daggerfall's executable, known as the Dagger XL engine. The idea is Bethesda originally used X engine, the very same engine they used for the licensed Terminator games. They also used that for Daggerfall, and it wasn't great. So Dagger XL was poised to replace that completely, eventually. Dagger XL despite being bare bones and feature incomplete, was a solid foundation that didn't include the bugs of the original engine. The developer got busy, and it was a closed source project, so the whole project just stagnated when the developer got busy. During this time, another developer created the 
Unity tools for Daggerfall that allowed poking around Daggerfall's level design in Unity. He open sourced everything and the project flourished into Daggerfall Unity that we know today, a full on Daggerfall port for the Unity engine. Dagger XL would get open sourced later, but by this time, Daggerfall Unity was already feature complete, save localization support. So the community was firmly behind Daggerfall Unity. To my knowledge, Dagger XL has stopped being updated entirely and is now more or less a curiosity. Daggerfall Unity, on the other hand, has made many, many updates over the years and expanded its mod support, fixed bugs. It is essentially in a release candidate state for normal people. That means pending finding any new bugs, Daggerfall Unity's done. Although the developer strictly labels as a beta for right now, that's going to change. It's, it's going to get its 1.0 release soon. That said, for you and me, the average player, nothing's really going to change between then and now. So let's talk about Daggerfall Unity. Daggerfall Unity, or DFU for short, is a program that you can run instead of launching Daggerfall through DOSBox, and it will be a modernized version of the game. When I say modernized, I do not mean for graphics, sounds, gameplay, or content, but rather for controls and stability, something that will let you run it on a modern system without the DOSBox interface. The rest of the things people have been associating with modernizing come from mods. That's a big thing. Because DFU has retro rendering mode built into it, as well as mods that reintroduce exploits that were corrected when the game's bugs were ironed out, you can play Daggerfall Unity as close or as far from the original as you want, but it's important to note that Daggerfall Unity is not the original Daggerfall. It's a platform for you to create your own Daggerfall experiences. That is the point where some well-intentioned individual at GOG created the GOG cut for Daggerfall Unity. But let's rewind for a second and talk about GOG a bit more. Good Old Games has a history of taking licensed video games and applying community patches to them. Fallout New Vegas, for example, has its 4 gigabyte patcher pre-installed. And I'm sure if you canvas the library of GOG games, you'd see that they went out of their way to create experiences that can be played more easily on modern systems. They've spared no effort in ensuring that modern audiences can sit down and play an authentic good old game. And I want to make sure that I take the time and commend them for that. I love what they've done, and I want to make that loud and clear. That is, before we talk about the GOG cut. The GOG cut has no doubt been created with the same love these employees have for other good old games. But the Elder Scrolls modding community is not the same as a utilitarian patch to expand a game's memory or compatibility. Mods for the Elder Scrolls are seen as creative endeavors. As a result, an inordinate amount of time was put into the concept of ownership in them. This is my mod. I made it. You aren't allowed to just repackage it and put it up on your storefront. That was the resounding cry by roughly half of the mod authors whose mods were put up for the GOG cut. Maybe a little less than half. Some of the authors said they didn't get contacted at all. Others said they got contacted the same time it went up, not giving them time to say, no, we don't approve of our mods being up. But whether that's true or not, I'm going to leave that in the realm of they said and move on. Not every Daggerfall mod is made to work together. Many of them are mutually exclusive and cause catastrophic bugs and glitches when used in tandem. This is not unique to Daggerfall. Anyone who's spent enough time modding Morrowind, Oblivion, Skyrim, Fallout 3, New Vegas, or Fallout 4 could tell you much the same. Anyone who has modded enough could have warned them if consulted. Daggerfall Unity, on its own, crashes almost never. If you were to install the original DOSBox version of Daggerfall and then use its data to power Daggerfall Unity, you'd get almost no crashes, ever. However, assemble the wrong mod loadout, like I've done a couple times on live streams before, and crashes can be semi-frequent. The GOG cut on release were especially egregious to the point where YouTube reviewers left and right were talking about how much Daggerfall Unity crashes as primary points in their video. 
Other reviewers would go into discussing features like sprinting on horseback being counted as an assault when they get taken to court. Sprinting on horseback is a mod added feature. I love the mod that adds it, but the mod not only expects you to know about all the features it added, but you can selectively turn them off in the mod configuration menu prior to launching the game based on your own personal preferences. Personal preference is a good way to roll into this. King of Worms got his five minutes of fame for having created a mod for Daggerfall called Dream, which repaints all of the 2D sprites in Daggerfall to make them look much higher fidelity. There was serious work put into this mod. When people remark about how Daggerfall has been remastered, Dream is what they're usually remarking about. It looks so much better than the original Daggerfall. See, they're reviewing the GOG cut, not actually Daggerfall Unity. While I do not dislike Dream, it's important to acknowledge that the style of Dream does not match the original. It fundamentally changes the tone of the game. I would argue for the better, but that is a subjective artistic opinion, meaning that other people are going to see it as a detriment, not a plus. They will call it things like watercolor. So even though I'm on the side of Dream makes it look better, I don't think it should be included in the GOG Cut by default, but rather be an optional HD graphics pack for the GOG Cut for one glaring reason. It balloons the game system requirements from something reasonable for low-end computers like laptops to something a mid-range gaming PC is basically required for. My PC is well within the bounds of what Dream requires, but I don't use it for one simple reason. I have content adding mods, and those mods added content that use legacy quality sprites. If I have to choose between stability and new content, I'm always gonna choose stability. If I'm going to choose between newer content and graphics, I'm always going to choose newer content. And in this case, I had a choice between higher quality graphics and a consistent art style with the added content. I went with the added content. I'm already playing a game with 2D sprites, so it should be painfully obvious that graphics are not my primary concern here. In order to explain my personal value system, I'm going to kind of talk about how my opinion diverges from the majority of video game players in the present day. I have a hierarchy of importance when it comes to video games. It starts with how enjoyable the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay feels. Below that are the controls, which factor well into the gameplay. From there, it filters down various categories to characters, narrative, world building, further down to music, sound, and finally, at the lowest level of consideration, we have graphics. Because I am perfectly capable of enjoying a text-based video game. Don't get me wrong, I'm not going to snub a game just because it looks good. But if one game is more fun but less pretty, I'm not going to give that pretty game any bonus points over the one that's fun. So to recap, ballooned system requirements, instability and crashes, mod added features that aren't a part of the core game design and cause people confusion. The GOG cut should have never been released in its current state. Elder Scrolls modding is for the most part a piecemeal affair where you will purposefully put in each mod knowing its place in the intended result within the load order. The modding community as a whole, including several members whose mods were used without their permission, they frown upon mod packs. But let's take a moment and assume that mod packs are actually good. Well, in a world where mod packs are actually good, why is God Cut still bad? Well, mod packs usually have a beefy list of notes that explain what their mod pack changes about the base game in order to set proper expectations within the user downloading the pack. GOG Cut does have a list of mods, and you can click into each of them, but it fails to set proper expectations. Now let's set aside the user experience and talk about the technical level. If you run the GOG Cut at its listed minimum system requirements, Get ready for crashes. Daggerfall Unity with the Dream Mod uses a lot of RAM. Even the recommended amount may not be enough for extended play sessions. I don't have this issue. I have 32 gigs of RAM, but your 4 gigabyte laptop may freeze. Even assuming you do have a beefy computer, well in excess of the system requirements, the mods are out of date. The Daggerfall Unity program and its supported mods have been trucking along for some time since the GOG Cut was originally released. New mods have been created, old ones have fallen out of favor or been discontinued. 
The modding space is a living, breathing thing, much like a community. And while I'd agree, taking a snapshot of an existing version of a mod loadout, it is an effective way of keeping that mod loadout working. My Cell Real Skyrim run was working well for over a year before I decided to replace it. I made basically no changes to it during the run, and that's what kept it working. Here's the thing. All the other problems I listed besides updates need to be resolved, and the GOG cut needed extensive testing on a variety of PCs low to high end. The product download page needed an overhaul. In short, it was fumbled from day one. I do hope that the GOG installation of Daggerfall Unity becomes more stable, more up to date, with better managed info. But it's important for folks to know that pretty much all of the Daggerfall reviews broadcast around the time of the GOG Cuts release are contaminated with its shortfalls. And it's GOG's fault, not the developers of Daggerfall Unity and not the developers of Daggerfall itself who are to blame. So this is less about GOG Cut bad and more about problems you heard about Daggerfall Unity are probably GOG Cut's fault. The title, The Worst, is hyperbole. But if people are commenting on this, and some of them have even listened to this point, then the title was successful. Click bait for life. So if you're interested in seeing what happens when minor modding compatibilities clash with each other, I've got a live streaming series going on, and I'll be posting the VODs interwoven with my Skyrim stuff over the next couple months. Keep an eye out for that. Check the links on screen for more content, and I'll see y'all next time. All right. Um, so we did the thing. We're basically good to go at this point. Murdered the enemy. Oh, shit. Gotta fight this guy. Excuse me, sir. Uh, I am silenced. I was gonna... I was gonna convince the battle mage not to fight me, and then I got silenced. Yes. Yep.